Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everybody. And I want to say Happy New Year. It's so lovely to see everybody on today. Can I ask everybody if possible, uh, this year, I really want to see everybody's face. 2020, I saw names. I want to see everybody's face. It's a new year. Come on, guys. Let me see those beautiful faces. Welcome, 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 welcome once again. This is the first sh um, talk over show of the year. So I'm very excited, really, really excited. And it's really nice to see my team, Hell and hearty, everybody back again. So I'm going to, without much ado, thank you so much um, for, for, for coming on tonight. Um, on behalf of Saffron Seikap, I want to wish everybody a happy and blessed new year as we start the new year. Um, my name is Giz Ojiako, and I am the director for programs for Saffron Seikap and also our sister company, Saffron SDGF. And um, with me tonight, um, I have my team. I call them my team, they're my family. Yeah, my Saffron family is in the house today. So without much ado, I'm going to ask them to unmute themselves and introduce themselves. I'm going to start with Marcia. I always start with Marcia. <laughs> She just loves them. 
Marcia. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. We know we had a terrible 2020, but there were opportunities for us. And 2021 is not going to be any different. We're going to have opportunities. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being part of our family. Thank you for being here every week. And welcome to the first show. My name is Marcia Eliza, and I'm responsible for youth engagement and intervention. Thank you, Marcia. And I also have Mr. Adibola on here. Would you like to unmute yourself, sis? Good evening. Welcome, welcome. Hello, good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome to New Year. Like my sister Marcia said, sister from another mother, um, this year is going to be better. It will be brighter. And be with Saffron because we're just going to be, in short, you don't want to know what we have planned for you. They say you just don't want it. I'm not going to leak the secret. I'm not going to be the secret. They, oh, you have to be here. You have to be here. <laughs> Thank you, Adebola. Thank you so much. And I think I have Taiwo in the house. Taiwo, are you able to say good evening or should we come back to you later? Hi, Taiwo. Hello. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Happy New Year. Go Happy ahead. New Year. I'm able to say a short good evening. Okay. Say only. No, no face show today. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, okay. All right. Welcome, everybody. You're in for a treat this year. Um, yes, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna do and achieve this year. We're a doing group, an achieving group. Yeah. We're gonna knock the ball out of the park, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Thank you so right. much. Okay. Nice to have you on. Nice and without you. much ado, I want to bring in our boss, my boss, Saffron Seikap CEO. Yummy. Please <laughs> unmute. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Can you hear me? <laughs> so you were like, in fact, I think you're you're in a different level of 2021 <laughs> different level yeah, the 2021 level <laughs> oh my goodness good evening everyone um welcome 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 to saffron seekab saffron sdgf um it's just so brilliant i think we're just all so happy to one be in 2021 grace of god thank you and um actually also We'll be doing what we love doing, and that is um, facing you from our end. Um, we do hope that um, you continue to join us through the year because, like everyone said, and I suppose they know the secrets, um, we have some blasting um, topics and guests coming on our shows this, this year. It's going to be amazing. So mm -hmm. um, hang on in mm -hmm. there um join us on facebook you can watch us later on youtube we hope to stream live to youtube and instagram in the next couple of weeks so yes we are on a roll have a lovely evening and please engage um send us your questions on facebook we'll pick them up we'll answer them um as best as we can and um please share 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 the more people we have um, talking, the issues that concern us, concern our children, concern our families, concern our schools, concern everything is all social issues and social problems. And we're looking at solutions for each and every one of them. So, yes, please share, share far and wide and um, have a lovely time. God bless. Thank you, Yemi. Thank you so, so much for that. And as Yemi said, yeah, we are, you know, we're back with a bang 2021. And it's not just about sharing the, the issues that we see within our community, within our hamlets. We're, we're, a, we're an organization that is focused on outcomes. We want results, you know. So when we have, we see these issues, we see the challenges, facing our communities. It's not just about highlighting these challenges or highlighting these issues. It's about, you know, arriving at favorable incomes, outcomes, not incomes, outcomes that will help people within our communities. And you know what, guys, we can't do this by ourselves. And this is why we have the 
um, voiceover to give you a platform. And the platform is for you to share, is for you to engage, and we practice 100% confidentiality. So if there are issues you cannot share openly, which we understand totally, please, please, please email us. And what I'm going to ask, we're going to drop the email on the chat so you can pick it up. We are on Facebook, we are on LinkedIn, we are on Instagram, we are on YouTube, um, we are on all the social media platforms. So please feel free. We also have our website, which we are going to drop in the chat for you to pick up. There will be things you might not be able to say live here and we totally, totally um, accept and understand. And we will ask that any stories you may be sharing, please do not mention names. And the reason being, and um, this is a public forum and it goes out very, very wide. And we would like to protect the identities, um, especially when this, the cases are very sensitive. So without much ado, um, thank you so much um, for, for the support. You have supported us throughout 2020 and we are humbled. Um, I would like to welcome anybody that has not been on the voiceover talk show before. Thank you so much for taking time out from your evening to come on today. We do appreciate you. We, um, we thank you because we always say without you, there really is no us. So today um, I'm really excited. There's so much happening this year. So, but we're gonna take it slowly. We're gonna take it bit by bit. This is January guys. So, you know, we've had Christmas and everybody is, you know, we've had our turkey or Amala, in that case, it could have been pounded yam, it could have been rice and peas, you know, everybody had what they had. And guess what? We've rolled into a new year, 2021. Um, and I'm not gonna, I, I don't wanna put a dampener on it, but it has come with a bit of, um, you know, for me, it was a shock, but when I've done my research, um, and what we've seen is that what, what has come up is January has, been, has shown itself as a very uh, delicate month when we're talking about relationships, you know? So what we decided as an organization, you know, was to highlight, and today's um, topic is obviously looking at the impact um, COVID-19 ha is having on relationships. And we're talking about breakdowns in marriage, um, divorce, and um, separations. Now, January the 8th, statistically, we've got two dates. We've got the 4th and we've got the 8th. But I think the two dates, one is a legal date and one is a social date. And these dates have been drawn out as dates where couples will go and seek in for a legal um, um, process to get a divorce. And when we were doing our research, because we do, we have to do a lot of research before we come on here. We thought, okay, this was this is a this is this is a huge one, um, and that led us to asking, why, why, you know, why why is it in January? You know, what what is so special about January that everybody decides after enjoying for the whole year, you enjoy in December, and then you decide the first week of January you want to separate, you want to get a divorce. But in the wider scheme of things, we've got a bigger umbrella. We've got the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and as an organization, we're asking you, how is this affecting your relationships? Um, how is this affecting the home front, the kids, your mental state, you know? Um, so if there is anybody on here who has, like I said, you know, let, let's be a bit discreet, generalize, just give us situation scenarios um, that we could look at um, and as to why we think these are the reasons that are leading to a breakdown in people's relationships. And it's an open mic, it's an open floor. That's how we operate here. There is no, but what we would ask is that we deliberate respectfully and, you know, um, respect everybody's respect each other's opinions because obviously we are allowed to have our own opinion okay um, so please um if anybody has anything to say please feel free go ahead yemi um we've um i was waiting for you but um while i'm waiting for you i'm probably going to jump in and do it and welcome all our guests who are on board yeah, this evening you can do that um well um we've we've actually introduced ourselves 
Um, yeah. I don't know. Please, if you'd like to um, unveil yourselves, and if you can't, please just say hello. Let's know who you are, where you're coming, where you're I mean, joining us from. Um, I know a face I haven't seen, but you know we're we're very very happy to have first timers on here today, and. Um, I'm so I'm going to try and pronounce your name, and I do hope I get it right. It's An Anoha, Ahuna, Ahuna, Anele. Did I get it right? Please unmute. Um, unmute yourself. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name my name is Ahuna. Hi, Ahuna. Okay, she's gone. Oh, okay. Okay, I think there's a bit of um uh recording. It's an echo. Yeah, yes. there is an echo, but don't worry, we will definitely come back to you, Akuna. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah, can you can, can oh, you speak now? We can hear you now. We couldn't hear you before. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, my name is Ahuna Nelo. Okay, do you have two devices? I do. Right, that's why right. one is there echoing. So mute one of the devices, please. Silence. Yeah. That will be done in a sec. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Can you? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay. My name is Ahon Nanele. I um, I'm a master mentor and relationship um, coach. That's fine. I um, live in Cameroon now. <laughs> I live in Cameroon now. Um, I'm happy to be here amongst um, you. Um, Ngozi Giz um, told me about this and I volunteered to come and talk about it. I've been married for 24 years. I'm talking from my experience <laughs> and um, from what I've seen around. Yeah, so that's that, so. Thank you, Ahanna. Thank you, it's beautiful to have you on. Okay, um, we have a look, look at me, Ayodele. You're welcome, sis, I see you here. Um, I see Loretta, she ran away. I <laughs> see Falakemi Kum. I know where you're calling from, Joss. I hope it's Joss, yes, you're welcome. Bev, Elim, everyone, you're welcome. Oh. Um, Mr. Rowland, you're welcome to. Um, okay, we have, and we do have quite a few people on Facebook. Please, if you just let us know um, who you are on Facebook, I will follow through and let everyone know. I see Auntie Grace, Alexander, you're welcome, and happy birthday to Prof. Um, uh, her, son's, her son was 26 a couple of days ago, and we really rejoice with, with her. Um, you'll know why when she comes on our program again. Much, much. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so yes, I am okay. handing it over okay. to you. Awesome, awesome. So, yes, and welcome to everybody, and thank you so much for joining us. Um, I join Yemi in, in welcoming you. So, yes, um, January, why, you know, why? Why does this month, why is this month synonymous with the breakdown in relationships? Why is it in January, everybody decides that, you know what, I've had enough, you know, it's, it's, yes, Ahuna, unmute yourself and go ahead. Your um, yeah, go ahead. Hello, everyone. Um, it's, it's really, there's so much pressure and you find out that um, during the Christmas period, from my own experience, you have um, people make plans for the Christmas, the spending and all that. And um, some of us, some partners become unreasonable. They want it to be um, same as usual. We have to spend. And somebody's telling you, we need to pay school fees. We have to plan for rent. We have to do, um, we don't need to spend all this money for just a day. And the other partner is unreasonable, thinking, no, we have to do it this way. And the other person says that. So when all is said and done, in January, there's pressure. And when the pressure starts, the other partner 
says what I told you, so you're your own. So when the other partner says, I told you, you're your own, there's now a problem. You're not cooperating with me. You are now doing everything myself. You, then you would have the euphoria of the Christmas and the Jan December spending, you must have forgotten. Because you know, there's the, the people say in Nigeria, where I come from, they say there's a spirit in Christmas. Christmas has that spirit. Even though we didn't have anywhere to go to because, to, to because of the COVID, people were spending, sewing clothes, spending unnecessarily, forgetting that because of the pandemic, or even before the pandemic, January is there's always a pressure. There's always pressure in January because the the the, the month seems to be very very long, and um, people have to eat. School fees have to be paid. Some people are laid off in um, doing the end of the, when when companies check their end of the year. Um, what do you call it now? Budget. Um, project or budget. They, 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 they sack some people or they downsize and it must have affected most people. And then somebody is telling you, see, let's not do it this way. And there's this pressure, peer pressure. And when they say peer pressure, people think they're referring to kids. It's more with the adults. There's this peer pressure. We, this is the way we do it. This is, that's, that's the way we do it. What will people say and all that? So we live, we, 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 we extraneous, extraneous people, extraneous things affect our decisions that we're making and we're being very unreasonable. And at the end of the day, the pressure lies between the two partners. And then when the person says, I told you, you're on your own, there's friction. And that's very heavy friction. The children against children. The mother will want the children to be. I, I told your daddy to pay your school fees, and he said there's no money. Money. And daddy says, when I told you not to buy that thing, you know that new game, that this, and you said no, we must buy it because it's Christmas. Everybody is buying it. There must be presents under the Christmas tree, you know. And then you, you know you you spend, you go out of your way, and then January there's always pressure, and the month is usually too long in quote in, in my opinion that's actually what what brings the pressure and then for those that go home for those that go home to visit to visit their parents or siblings or whatever there are people that come and say is this the way people do things there's always um uh, you know factors not even between the two of you that comes to play in in relationships that's my own um, take okay Thank you so much for that. It made quite a lot of sense. Um, you know, you picked up on the spending, you picked up on peer pressure, unreasonable decisions. Um, I, I think I like this last one you talked about where you said it's not just pressure between the two people, but external people get involved. Um, I don't know if you can elaborate more on, on that 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 what you said when you said external people get involved give us like an idea give me an instance of yeah um um let, let's give an instance um where husband and wife you live together you plan your life there must always be planning uh, before you spend you plan before you go on that um, visit you plan before you decide to give anybody any christmas um, gift you plan and then it happens that you have a visitor, a guest that came in from maybe the village or you went to the village and somebody sees you consulting and you know reducing or increasing and, and starts complaining and like, is that how you could do it? Do you need to take permission from her? Is that not your money? Or the woman, are you, are you taking permission from him? Don't you make your own money? And then based on that, you now, uh, make decisions that norm, you wouldn't normally have done between the two of you. Just, just to show that, um, yes, I'm, I'm my own person. I'm grown, you know, and nobody tells me what to do. So when the person goes and you would have made that decision or you would have slighted that your partner in front of the person, there's always a rebound. There's always um, anger. You know, so this is what you told me in front of this person. So now I don't have, um, I don't have a say. Why did you do that? And you can't even explain it out because you don't, you won't bring back the person to now say, no, this is the way we do things, you know? So, so such things, such things bring a lot of pressure or where you have um, visit, maybe during that Christmas period, um, a relation says they are coming or maybe your parents or something, 
and you know it's so tight. It is so, so tight. You have to pay for their transport. You have to feed them and all that. And then maybe before then, you could have been managing your small resources. And then the person comes, the, the husband says, your mom can't come this time. I mean, let her stay with her husband or your father can't come or your own, either way. And then there's like, why wouldn't they come? Okay, in most, you think you, you think with your heart. Men say, women think with their heart. My mom must come, my mom. And then you, because of your heart, you put so much pressure the way you know how to talk to your husband or your, your wife and they let the person come. The person comes with baggage. As they are leaving, you have to settle them. You have to give them money. They bring their own problems. They bring problems of other people that know they are going to see your son. Maybe you could have not even been um, out with, uh, with what has been happening to you because you feel you don't want to put your parents under pressure. So all of a sudden they've come in, they've seen what is happening. Um, they, they still don't understand it. They feel you are making it up and all that. So these are, these, 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 some people can't take pressure. Some people can't take pressure. Um, we, uh, maybe on Christmas Day, um, you, do, you don't want to do turkey because you don't have money for turkey. And then you have to, you have to show, you have to pretend that everything is okay just to make them happy. So that pressure is on the person. And at the end of the day, it's just the two of you. And the earlier we know that it's just between husband, wife, children. You know, if you allow these people to come in, they will still go back to their places and stay in peace. So you have, we, we, we should actually think with our, not with our hearts, but with our head. But most times you see us being too emotional, but my mom didn't come last year, Oh, mom came last year, but it's not the same thing. Last year, there was no COVID. Last year, they, you know, they didn't lay me off. But this year, we can't do it. But you're on basing your, 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 basing your decision and your request from last year, Mom, your mom came last year and this is my own year. So if you want to go and borrow money, go and borrow mommy, money, my own mom will come this year. And I mean, makes sense, but it's unreasonable. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, and, and I think, you know, I hear a lot of you're coming from the village, you're going to the village. So I think you're speaking from the perspective of the families back home, right? Okay. Um, and it would be lovely for us to hear, for those in the UK or let's say in America, if we can hear somebody's take so that we get that balance because it, it's possibly going to be, you know, almost the same. I think I don't think there'll be that much of a difference, but it, it would be nice to hear um, the take for some for, from the, the from a UK perspective, um, what we think the pressures especially with the COVID, the pressures on relationships, um, um, marriages, you know, it could just be, you know, it could even be siblings. We're talking of relationships, not necessarily just um, um, husband and wife, but relationships as a whole. What do we think are the pressures, especially now? Because COVID is not just happening in one country. This is worldwide, it's global. So um, if anybody would like to contribute and put some, shed some light. Thank you, Ahuna. That was very, very um, informative and insightful, you know? And you, you said something there. You said, you know, it should be between, you know, two people. And we'll come back to that towards the end. But um, if we could hear from anybody else who has a take on maybe what they've witnessed over the past couple of months with COVID and relationships, Loretta. You've unmuted yourself. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Yeah, it's good to see you. Good to see you all as well. Yeah. Um, I, I, I was listening to Ahuna, and I think, um, Gez, you, you actually pointed out that this is probably a very um, cultural perspective. I think, personally, any marriage that's ending, and I'm just talking in terms of marriage now, any marriage that ends in January or you file for divorce in January based on the pressures of Christmas is a questionable marriage in the first place, if that's the only issue that creates you to go and file for divorce in January. Personally, I think that January is a time um, when people reflect, when people think about how they want their life to go forward. And I think it's probably when you look at what's, what's going right for you and really, really thinking about um, all the things that that, that, that you want to carry into the year with you. And if this thing does not serve you, so the problem, so there were problems there before, 
um, and, and maybe Christmas highlighted it with, with the unreasonable behavior or the lack of compromise, I think I would want to use rather than the, the, it being unreasonable behavior. Um, and then it just highlights it. And then in January, you like this, this person no longer serves me um, and I, I need to end this marriage. And then you file for it in, in January because it's new beginnings and you're going down that route. So that's what I would say. In terms of COVID, I think what's happened in a lot of households is we have been forced to um, spend far too much time with the people that we actually really thought we loved and realize that actually um, love was not enough um, and maybe our values were not aligned more, most importantly and now we're spending time together and the things that you overlooked or didn't really consider because you've had a lot of time to think um, you know, it has, has pushed people to, to saying that actually this, this, this individual no longer serves me and I need to end this, um, this relationship. So right. I think COVID has probably pushed people to, to spend a lot of time together. I mean, if, if, if you're married and your, your husband works and your wife works, you guys spend how much time together and then you've got children as well. So you come home from work and you do the children's stuff. You go to, you spend minimum time together, maybe the weekends, maybe holidays. And now all of a sudden you're 24 seven with this person. Um, all their deficits are highlighted a hundredfold for you. Um, and, and you start questioning, do I need to be with this person? This, that thing that they did yesterday or last week, actually, I just can't cope. And we're all under a lot of pressure being, being at home, um, you know, I don't I don't know about anybody you know anyone else but you know if you live in the UK not everybody has the um the the good fortune to have multiple rooms that you can actually disappear to so a lot of people are in each other's space all the time and 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 your mental well-being you just think this person is not doing anything for that and then you get you get rid or you are more inclined to say okay look I need to I need to go my separate way or we need to go our separate ways so that's what I think COVID has done in terms of relationships but but January it's definitely for me it's the it's a time for new beginnings and that's when people are making goals and plans for their lives and that's when why they may decide to file for divorce in January but that's just my take on it awesome thank you Loretta yeah yeah I, I like what you said you know people it's it's like a reset button so January is where people press the reset button reflect and decide okay this is not for me um yeah so it, it's nice you gave us the take from the UK perspective Ahuna gave us the more of a cultural if you like um perspective which 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 really too can can also um um, um align with what happens here um, but I do like a point you made you said about the house space um, I think that's that's one of the it's it's a big one, you know, the idea of you not having a, a place of escape, you know, and I'm sure we all I'm going to be really careful when I say this, but, you know, I'm sure couples are very much in love. But when you're seeing each other Monday to Sunday, 24 seven, you know, sometimes you just need a bit of a break. And, you know, um, and that doesn't mean you know, you don't love each other, but we're human, you know. Um, so I believe that too. Yes, Loretta, that, that's a big one. The, 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 the small houses that we have, you know, in London, if you're stuck in a flat, some families are in a one bedroom, two bedroom flat, and they've got maybe three, four children with lockdown. You can imagine what is going on in that home. You know, Nigeria, honestly, it's a lot better because even if they are flats, you've got the huge compound. You know, if you're anything like me, if I want, I'll just run to a corner. So, yeah, it is, it is, um, it is, it is, um, it, it is, it's a difficult one. Um, I want to welcome Mr. Felix Waseni from Abuja. Good evening. So lovely to have you on. Happy New Year, sir. <laughs> Yeah, we're just talking today about relationships and this is for anybody else on Facebook. We forgot to welcome our Facebook family. I know you mentioned it, um, Yemi, but anybody who has just joined us now on Facebook, I've been seeing a few people, we're talking about relationships and the impact COVID has had on these on the relationships, breakdowns, divorce and separation. So please feel free. Can I just say something? Please? Sure. Like, 
Go ahead, Adibola. Okay. Um, in terms of what Loretta said, I just want to say that um, I think what we need to understand is what is escapism for a lot of people. Yes. What is where the what is people's therapy away from home? What is where people socialize on another level? I know that since I've not been at work, I've missed there is there is um, the spirit of being in a team at work, which is different from being at home in a with your family. And for a lot of people, people go to work to escape from family. I I know I used to work with a colleague that would take herself out to dinner, she would have a very good lunch. She would obviously spend money on that because you know, that's our way of obviously enjoying us. People have different ways of, of coping with the pressures in a difficult relationship. And I think I think Loretta is right. I think what, what this current situation has done is, is put us all uh, in a space where the dynamics are bouncing off the wall because we're now in each other's space. And I think what I have noticed in my line of work is domestic violence is higher. Uh, couples are fighting more. Children are witnessing domestic violence more and is having an impact on children. Uh, there is an increase in the number of children, families coming to the extension of the social care in this pandemic with crisis in the home because what usually did happen, and I think especially in different fields where people had that space away from each other when they went to work, but now they don't have that space and they're not. And, and sometimes what people find with workplaces, work is like their therapy. They go to work, they talk to their colleagues about what's going on at home. People go to their hairdressers. Hairdresser is a therapist on their own. Women are able to share. They feel a lot of burden unlifted on them when they go back home. The situation is there, but you have places that you can escape to. You have places that help you to, to deal with those feelings. But actually, the um, I have to say, when, when they still told us to walk from home, I was like, yay, it's good. But actually now it's yay. <laughs> the the uh the the celebrated status around the world, I have to say I miss the cupcake at work I miss all the sausage rolls oh, I miss the biscuits I miss the tea oh I miss everything <laughs> so yeah so I I I certainly agree with what Loretta said about the fact that you know people obviously go to I feel I know a lot of colleagues that and I've worked with a lot of colleagues in the past that work was their escapism. Mm -hmm. And what we don't know, what we need to understand is some people find themselves in situation where they want to separate from their partner, but they can't because somehow, somehow they have to be together. So they manage that by going to work, by having time out with their friends. All of that has been taken away. And that's why the situation has got really bad. Oh, wow. Yeah, I really agree with you, Debola. <laughs> Because um, I was just thinking that that um, we we we've, Diz and I talked about a narrative, and it was just exactly what you've said is, um, people, you know, generally have a let out because they can go to work, um, have their friends at work, and then they can come back home, and you know, it's just that okay, we're going to have dinner, we're going to maybe. Um, uh, what do you say? You 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 manage each other, and then it's bed, and then it's work tomorrow. So it sorts of um, you know, holds that that discord, and there's a let out tomorrow morning. So you're able to hold that, and then tomorrow you're off again. And but when you're all in that same confined space, how do you manage that? But funny enough, when we actually also did um, our research, we actually found out that normally it's in January, about the first week in January, that you have this influx to solicitors, people looking for solicitors who, who are divorce lawyers and also from the internet. So there's a lot of surge. Funny enough, this year it wasn't that much in January because a lot of it had even been searched over 
the the lockdown so it was that between august september october there was a high rate of of um searches there was a high rate of contact with solicitors apparently there was 250 percent increase i'm thinking what happened it was only a few months that we're all together and then suddenly everyone wants let out and then Debola mentioned what really even played more on my mind is how are the children feeling in there? You know, this I see situations where there is that big quiet and how how do these children feel? And you have children who probably end up locking themselves up in the rooms with their computers, meaning parents don't know what's even happening with the children on their computers. It just raises so such serious alarms. You, you just really, really worry. And like you said, Debola, that um, there was an increase that generally um, every service has seen a big increase in domestic violence over the, the lockdown period. And um, we have services, we have actually noticed a couple of services that have just opened um, addressing domestic violence. So it's um, it's a really serious issue. And, and it's not just the word divorce, it's all the things, that, social elements that come around that word divorce that's, um, that's worrying. Hmm. Thank you. Yeah. On, on another note, can I just say that we also have heard stories of resilience been developed in this current pandemic where couples that were meant to divorce have now found out that they have something in common. So there have been a mixed bag, but I know that we have more of the other side than what we, the other scenario, the uh, couples getting back together is what we mm. would want. Yeah. And, and that's been happening, but mm. actually more I just wanted to. I wanted to put that spin in. Sorry, Gis. yes, it's good to. No, it's good to put the balance in because it's, it's yes, bad. there are people. Yeah, there are people who have really discovered that. Oh, okay, because they've been forced to talk. You know, they've been forced to to socialize amongst themselves and not socialize on the outside. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And um. That 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 that's that's room. Gives room for thought. I'm actually not divorcing my husband anymore. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry for you. you. I'm happen. sorry for you. <laughs> I, I, um, I, I um, want to add to that. Yeah. Um, when 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 you start work, and you um, there's something they call work life balance. So you find out that you're not supposed to be consumed by work alone. You're supposed to balance it. You're supposed to do your work and come home and be happy at home. If you, if you lose it in, in the first instance, when you want to go, you feel like going out. You, you, know, you know, if you if you balance, if you balance your office and your home, you enjoy your office when you go to the office, you enjoy your home when you come back home. That other half, when you're now merging it together, would not be that that difficult. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would be that difficult. If you if you, if you really want it to work out, some people are so consumed in their work that they don't know what is happening in their homes. They don't know what their children are doing. They don't even know how their children are doing their homework and all that. And then all of a sudden you're at home with your children. Then uh, one of you says, okay, check the, the boy's um, homework. He doesn't even know what class his child is in and all that. So you, if you had balance, if, if we balance it up an issue, we will have, it will be, there'll be pressure, but it won't be as, as mm -hmm. uh, you know, as much as it is now, because you already have a life with your family and you have a life with your, with your office. Sure. But some people just do 90% office, 10% home. And then when they now say carry the 90% and put in the 10%, that's a problem. But if it's 50-50, everybody will meet each other halfway. You bring your 25% home. I bring, you know, so I'm, I'm used to making, doing, doing the children's homework. I'm used to helping out in the house. I'm used to letting um, either my husband or my wife relax when she feels pressured. All of a sudden, you don't do all that. And you now have to do it because you really have to do it. Do you understand? So if there was this work-life balance in the first instance, there wouldn't be so much 
pressure. I mean, tilting or tweaking your life a little bit to meet your, you know, the pressure that the, the, the times have um, presented before us. I don't think it will be that bad. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. And uh, we're yeah. speaking, and I just want to say Ahuna is actually a certified relationship expert. So, you know, we're hearing from an authority. We always like to get professionals on board because it's it's nice for us to just read and speculate. But when you have experts on, you know, they've done years um, of researching and studying on the on the on the on the subject. So, you know, you can hear the professionalism coming out. So thank you so thank much. You. Uncle, Mr. Felix, you wanted to say something. Sorry. It's, yeah, okay. very, very quickly, very quickly, thank sure. you, Madam Gs, for introducing me. Happy New Year to all of you. Thank and, you. Uh, and uh, I'm happy I was sharing the anchor talking about research. Talking about research. But I want to ask very quickly, too, how has it been easy for you to conduct that research, comparing the research you conducted during COVID and the research you used to conduct when there is no COVID, when you didn't think anything relating to COVID? Were they the same? Certainly no. There were zero restrictions on your way of doing things, a new normal. But let me ask very quickly, in all the analysis we have made so far, have we ever paused to think about families, individuals, children, single or parent, uh, parents' homes, I mean a, a, a home where you have only the mother or father and the kids, and suddenly, suddenly I say, they just lost everybody, only one person is left. Hmm. I want to ask, does that research you conducted, Madam Host, does it extend to finding out the situations in such families where suddenly this COVID claims about three, four, five lives in one family, leaving only one person? Yeah. And then we are, we, are, we are talking of the stress the strain which this COVID has put on human relationship. It is now clear we have to put the human relation, the human value side by side about the real supreme value, the supreme value which the all the distancing protocol, the difficult protocol that COVID has given up on life. That is the service of life. Are those couples quarreling? making resolution and changing their ways of doing things. Oh, this person loves me, doesn't love me. Begin to measure the value of uh, and the quality and quantity of love. What about the service of life? If there is no life, would there be job in the first place? If there's no effort to protect life, that is so precious. Life, if there is no effort, if, there, if no effort is made to protect that life that is so valued, that is at the center. I don't think we think about love in the first place. They have to be allowed to marry each other. Yeah. So what, yeah. Saying, what we are saying here in effect is that we should begin to look at the pandemic in the 17th century, the pandemic that happened in the 17th century. The difference between that pandemic and now is that this COVID, I repeat, this COVID is so deadly. No pandemic has ever claimed such terrible lives, you know, such such multitude of lives within days, within hours. We are talking about 20, uh, 1,000, 2,000 people die. And if you conduct global statistics, you discover that within one hour, the world may have lost up to, say, 100,000, 200,000 persons globally. Yeah. God forbid. So what I want us to begin to look about, how do we begin to sensitize children, institutions, including marriage institutions, to attach value to the main thing that the pandemic is threatening, life. OK. Not Are you able to give us an insight? Um, no sacrifice is too small. No yeah. sacrifice is too small to be right. made now at the service of life. Right. That's why I say that research should have extended to getting feelings in families that have lost three, four, five persons. Yeah. Whether mother or child or father or mother or wife or whoever, I think their emotions are different, certainly different. Okay. Not the I, way we're them here. That's fine. So brilliant. Lovely. I love what you've just said. But what I need you to understand is the scope you are speaking about is different to the, the topic we are talking about today. We are looking at the effects of COVID, not just on, not, not on death, not on the loss of family. It is actually um, how it affects the living. OK, so we're not looking at. But what, what you have stated today, you're right that we, we that 
the effects of um, COVID um, on, on families who have lost somebody um, is slightly different because what we are looking at is the, the effects on families who are still together, but how they are managing the impact of COVID, okay, um, within their living relationships. This scope is something we are going to deal with at a later date. But what we're talking about today is relationships, whether you're married, divorced, separated, how has COVID been the, the catalyst? What has been the catalyst to these um, uh, to this result? So we're looking at how COVID is impacting on families what is the course? And you, what started it was when we did research for January, we found out in the United Kingdom, the 8th of January is a specific date where couples seek legal intervention and go and request for a divorce. So as an organization, we've wanted to have a look and say why this is happening. So that's fine. That Hold your thoughts. What we will do we might get you to come back and give us an insight based on what you have just said, that scope, because that research is, um, is, is separate. But thank you so much for that. Go ahead, Yemi. Um, do you know what he, um, Mr. Felix, you actually picked on something that I, and I think, um, hearing what you're saying is, and I think the angle he's looking at it, or maybe I'm seeing it from his angle, is that, um, a lot of um, people who have lost loved ones. So you have a home yeah. where there are two, obviously two, two people and your children. So when one has lost, um, where, when it, where there were two, it, it becomes one. How does that impact on the family? Yeah. I, I believe that that's what I'm hearing. And, I, and yes, it, it is that it sort of differs from the fact that, okay, we have two people in a relationship and it doesn't matter. It might just be girlfriend, boyfriend, young ones, older ones. It has the effect of COVID, the fact that COVID has come into play. You have more time together. You have more time to think together, talk together. Do you start to see the differences in yourselves or over the Christmas celebrations? Do you then, um, you know, like when, when families come together and I, I said to this and it's like, um, there's a lot of drink, there are a lot of um, ports and um, whiskey and all of these drinks and, and people then, you know, get intoxicated and there's some family secrets <laughs> that will decide to be outed, um, things that people have been keeping. Why are you laughing, Lorenzo? <laughs> Why are you... There are some family secrets that will be outed, things that people have kept in. And when you're angry, the truth really does come out. And when the truth comes out, there's, there's, there's going to be a lot of um, fracas along the way. And that's when you see a lot of people thinking, oh, my goodness, okay, so have, I, have I been living with a liar for so many, so many years? Um, and they're waking up to the rare fact that um, some things that they thought was true are not true. Blue is definitely not blue in this house. Blue is red. Um, and then all these things come out and they start to look at divorce lawyers even before Christmas is over. Um, and these are the issues that we're addressing. It's, if, you, if, you, if you take time out to look on the internet, there are cases and um, we, we don't want to advertise the lawyers, but we went into about three very high-end um, divorce um, lawyers in this country and the stories that were put in there, unbelievable. So it just gave us cause to think that it's, this is a social issue. However, add COVID into that mix. And it's a, it's a volcano that, um, that it's, has erupted over, over the last one year. Yeah, and there is there is something. If you allow me, if you allow me, sorry, Gs, if you allow me. Yeah, go ahead. I want to quickly say that uh, we also need to place the uh, love. When you say love in human relations, in marriage, we have to place love above human imperfections. If you mm. want your past spouse or partner to be 101% uh, perfect, you may never get it in a human person. It's not psychologically humanly impossible. It's not God. You're not playing God here. Uh, you cannot be 100% um, just acceptable, just like everything that this person does, exactly like you. But when you say love, love is 
despite your weakness. I mean, understanding your weakness, I still love you and accept you the way you are. I think that is the primary essence of love in a marriage. For those who value the, the, the essence of love in marriage and what it depends on the value we attach to marriage, to different societies are different one society to another. They are in Africa, in Britain, in the UK, and other in the uh, US, they are, they are different uh, way culture have come to affect the, the concept of love, especially love in marriage. But I believe that where, where marriage is, where love in marriage is valued. I think uh, that love should, should, should be far above human imperfections. And that is how it can only work. I mean, yeah. you the power for who she is. It is not something you see that we call a relationship shock. I've never seen before, maybe 10, 15 years of marriage. We've just seen it because of COVID. That is not the reason why you should say, because of this imperfection, oh, I'm backing out. No. I think that does not make for maturity in human relationship. We're talking about love in marriage, yeah. Just my take. I might be foolish in my comment, but just, that's just the way I see it. No, that's your opinion. You're entitled to your opinion. That's fine. That's fine. So sacrifice. Can you elaborate more on that. So what are you trying to say? That we should be more resilient, even, yeah? OK, so then when you think of the, the Obviously, I know that you're, you're based in Abuja. So when you think of COVID and the impact, we heard that at the end of the year, job losses, um, those pressures, the external pressures that are placed on marriages, relationships, how then would you, um, how then would you relate the, the resilience you talk about? How would you, you know, expect that to come to play in a, in a, in a family that has just been devastated by these, um, um, the results of the, the impact of COVID, COVID. Yes. What I'm saying is that when I talk about love and resilience, as you just, we both just express, resilience in this context means look at your spouse in the face and look at yourself as human. And then ask yourself an inner question, all these troubles, brought about and the economic strain which the COVID imposed on our lives, is it a making? Who is giving the cost? Is it my spouse, is it my wife or my husband or my son or my daughter? No, no. They didn't just come because somebody is um, incompetent or somebody is uh, incapable of managing uh, the economy of the family. They came because of external pressure and by by to, 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 to punish your spouse because of a, a, a circumstance that she has no control over, I think that is the kind of trying to play God. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. For it's a circumstance that's naturally not his or her making. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Yan. Um, yes. Um. This is um feedback from Facebook, and um someone's just um sent a message that. Um, and I think this is like looking at a solution that we might not have gotten there. But um, they've said that if you have normally, you have um, a working um, relationship, um, you have um, a home situation, home, work, and social um, life, the balance, if you have that balance working well, when you are in this sort of situation, um you might be able to cope better if you had a, an even even um playing field to start with but if, when you don't have much of a social life so um when you're with it within the lockdown you um you don't have no one else to talk to but the person that you really don't talk to then who do you talk to um that so it, it's it's um the impact is more when you both um spouse and and the other spouse do not have a social life so it, it what what um they're saying is that it's a it's a triangle if you are able to fit those triangle in your everyday life even if one drops out the other would would even out the balance even. i think that's my understanding from what i've been told okay okay thank you for that Welcome, Dee. We have one of our other directors who's just joined us. Thank you, Dee, for coming on. 
<laughs> Good evening, everyone. Sorry I'm late. That's okay. You're not. That's not a problem. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, um, thank you for that, Yemi. And yes, the triangle. I like how you um talked about that because that ties in very well with what Ahuna was saying earlier on about having the work family life balance. And um what I'm hearing in my job out there, because I obviously I work in the healthcare sector sector. And I think an, a major problem that is out there today with this pandemic is the inability of us to be able to socialize. You know, um, I think we took so much for granted before COVID, you know, you'd call, I'd call up my friends and say, let's go out Friday night. Oh, I can't be bothered. Nah, nah. I know that the minute lockdown is over, nobody will be home again, you know, yeah. because honestly, it's on a more serious note. I think that is the issue, you know, where you cannot even go and sit down and have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee like we used to do. You know, something as little as that, you know, I personally, I personally will be going to every single restaurant. I will not be cooking. I will eat out for one year. That's how bad it's going to be for me. And yeah, please judge me. Just judge me now. Because the, um, like, no, seriously, the impact it's having, I mean, it's crazy. I get to see people, but it's virtually. And I love seeing everybody virtually, but I have not hugged anybody apart from my kids in almost a year. It's not nice. So I see what you are saying, Mr. Felix, and I, I get that about resilience. But I think what we also have to understand is that everybody's threshold is not the same. Um, what I can tolerate, you might not be able to tolerate you know, and I think that's what we need to be thinking about as we're out there. And when you see people, people need to talk. A lot of the people, the, the marriages and the relationships breaking down is people are not able to vent. Um, it's, it's easier when you're able to vent and talk to your friend who might then say to you, no, you did wrong. You go back home and tell him you're sorry. Or you, your, 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 your male friend will say, no, you didn't do madame well now. Go tell and say you're sorry, you know? And then you go home and you sit down. We're not, we don't get that, you know? Um, it would be nice to hear how people are coping with the socializing aspect, because I think that is a major problem with right. the relationships at home. Good evening. Good evening, Yusuf. Good how evening. are you? Good, Good evening, Mr. Naka. Good evening, everybody. Fine, thank How are you? you? I am very sure. Uh, anyway, I'm happy to be in, in this forum. And I know when one or two will be happy to see me coming. I <laughs> had to skip some other things to actually come in. Thank you. Um, on this uh, topic that we are discussing, I want to look at it from three different angles. And I will now tell you, the forum, my own experience, my own personal experience. The first one is the COVID and the, the family relationship. We need to look at the, the two players involved. That is the mom and dad. That is number one relationship. Then a situation where the mom and dad are working um, virtual, virtual from home. That's another one. Another relationship is the mom and the children or the father and the children. Now, when you look at uh, the peer to each other, but then let's look at one of them to the children. The mother to the children find out from my own findings because of uh, what happened to me, I find out that the, the women are more aggressive at home working from home, they, they don't have that tenderness that they used to show when they go to the offices to work. At home, it's as if the old pressure is on them, and then the moment they set their system on or their device on to join the meeting, the next thing is a, um, a kind of a anchor moment setting. Go, 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 go. Go, come on, show me how many... Doing offline and things like that, 
and then the, 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 the mom and the children, and then the father is now saying that this is not the kind of person that this woman used to be. Especially, sorry, um, women that are up the ladder there. It becomes very difficult as they seem to want to concentrate more on the job than the home. So, invariably, you find them leaving home to, to somewhere else that, oh, let me just go and spend four hours to be maybe my friends out and then come back to meet my, my to, to the house to complete, to conclude the work. But the father, who is more resilient, will sit down there, probably because the children are used to or not disturbing the dad, then the, the you will not find out that the children, uh, the father is coping with the tension, a hey, stay off and things like that. He find a way, a, a soft way to put them in their places and probably take one or two minutes off and then settle them and then go back to the job. That is a relationship with the children. Now, relationship with each other now, um, it is not, the normal. I mean, when it was the, the normal case, it is. It has actually. Uh, it has absolutely brought out a lot of um, a lot of hidden. How would I put it? Uh, it. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what. The, I don't know the psychological word to use. The, the, it has brought a lot of negativity in our women. It has shown a lot of negative reaction from women towards their husband. And mm. it, it, it's, 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 it's quite appalling. I'm also, I'm also you that this, if you find out in 10 homes, what was the relation, what's the relationship they have before COVID with their wife and now, how has, it, how has the relationship been you find out that it has not been the same. It has not been the same. In some cases, it is worse. Then not, and they, they find it hard to cope. And God knows after COVID, what's going to happen. Now, let me not give you a personal experience. I'm giving you three instances. Now, let me give you a personal experience. Um, my wife is the level 17 of in the legal state ministry. March 27th, the lockdown started, or oh, that is 2020, and everybody were like, oh, how are we going to do it, and things like that. So working from home started. I just found out that by two weeks after the lockdown and we started working from home, um, it's like, oh, I want, to, I want to move out so that I can have pay more attention to my work, especially now that the lockdown, the traffic from my office to my home will be, will be, will be so difficult. If I can, uh, if you don't mind, can I move my, to my twin brother's house, who is a, uh, who only have a wife and no children, so that I can have time, I can take one of the room, then be attending to my job and whatever. And I said, um, okay, at least you'll be, if you go, Monday, you come back on Friday so that at least the children won't disturb me. That's what the excuse. I said, okay, go. But I found out that after first week, second week, then the excuse is now that I, I can't come home. It seems this thing is getting serious and all that and all that. And I was like, ah, my what's happening? This is not what we agreed on. What is really happening? Then, of course, obviously, she had to come home the next day, which was a Saturday. And after a while, the following week, she intended to go. She said she wants to go. So I said, okay, go. No problem. Believing that, okay, things will change. But as I'm telling you today, right now, she's no more in my house. Because she took the excuse that, oh, your home is not disturbing. Yes. You can say, oh, because then I don't know the question will come. Do you have children at home? Do our own children are not our are in overseas. They are not with us. We have he, yeah, we have two boys. They are not. But I have we have um, two siblings staying with us, and a little one at uh, six. So the, the logic is 
oh, when I'm at home, there is not always this pressure. I don't have time to attend to work. I don't even have time to attend to my thing. There are a lot of distractions and all that. And because of that, I allow that to happen. Now, the COVID subsided by September. Okay, good. Senior staff are still allowed to see the coming to allow someone. Then the traffic of Lagos set in, and then so COVID can move from uh, it has moved from COVID to traffic and from traffic to and and I asked, Madam, is that your intention? Do you intend to use that as an excuse to move out? And it's like ah, for now, I'm still okay. Let me just sort myself out. But when I this when I that, that is the bitter part, the bitter pill that I have swallowed during the COVID. Over to you, wow. women. Over to the women. I am going to come in because um, because I'm really, really happy that you're on board. I was surprised to, to get you come on board. Um, wow. Um, I don't know why you say it's women. No, it's not all of us, so. <laughs> not really. <laughs> Um, I don't know, like, um, I think before you came on, we were really discussing that um, um, sometimes if there are issues um, ongoing within um, relationships, and um, then the fact that um, COVID setting, lockdown setting, it then um, raised it higher to, you know, very higher levels, and and, and somehow it's it's like I'm looking for a a a let out, um some an escape route. You know maybe <laughs> yes and and okay oh if I if I take this chance then I can I can get out of it, and sometimes maybe if COVID didn't happen then you probably wouldn't be saying that, because mm -hmm. that came into play, um it was. <sighs> I'm not saying you, but it might be where it's like it was too close for comfort. Going back to that um, that phrase, too close for comfort, and um, um, there were issues that um, it just had to, had to address it separately in a different light. So I I I think that if you pardon me, I think that um, there might have been issues um, ongoing before that, but um, it was just an escape route. And um, it was just a, a chance to to take on whatever happened. Um, but hmm, maybe maybe I'll I'll I'll, I'll call and it's possible. And it's possible. Talk it's possible. About that later. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. We're gonna move over to Lily. Lily wanted to ask a question, but thank you for that, Mr. Alaka. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we will we will we will speak to you off camera. Okay. Okay. Sir, okay. You, you Thank called. You. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Lily. You're muted. Lily. You're muted. Sorry, I'm mute. <laughs> All right. Good evening. Sorry, I joined a bit late. That's um, okay. Good evening. But I'm glad to be here. <laughs> so, um, the from what I understand, um, when it comes to being in lockdown and by yourself um there are because i mean i can't manage to be at home like completely not see anybody at all for the next month so when i looked into the government guidance there are um ways to ensure that you maintain your your you know you socialize but obviously within restrictions so when they talk about the bubbles you're allowed to meet with another household um, under the restrictions of a bubble if it's legal. So I, I said to myself, well, what do they mean by legal? You know, what are the perimeters there for legal? So it does say that if you're an adult living on your own, you can arrange to go and see somebody to make sure that, you know, you don't get depressed, you don't get lonely, or if you're in a household and there is a very young child, maybe you're a single parent and you've got really young children, there's no adult interaction, you can actually go out and uh, form a bubble with another family. So 
there are escape routes. Obviously, it can't be taken advantage of, and you have to um, make sure you follow the guidelines. You can also take up maybe volunteering, you know, maybe helping to feed the homeless and things like that. So I think that if people are really struggling to be at home on their own, like completely, they're not going out to work, they're not meeting with anybody, and they are on their own, there are um, pathways for you, the government has made to actually deal with that. It's on the government guidance. Brilliant. Thank you so much for that, Lily. Um, mm. Yeah. That's, that's for those of us, obviously, in the UK. And I'm sure, you know, for listeners who are in different parts of the world, you know, I think it would be um, a good idea to, to check what your own that government guidelines um, yeah. are. Um, and also, I think, you know, if COVID has taught us anything, it's about kindness, you know, be kind mm -hmm. to one another, you know. Um, I know in this country, some of us, don't really speak to our neighbors, not because we're keeping malice, but everybody seems to, especially within the UK, keep themselves to themselves. Maybe this is a time where we knock on that neighbor's door and ask that neighbor, how are you? Are you okay? Do you have every basic thing you need? You know, And it might not even be what you can help them with, but you might be able to signpost them to somebody or an organization that can help them. Um, I remember earlier on, uh, Adebola said about the, the rise in domestic violence, you know, um, if you hear somebody screaming, I'm not asking you to put yourselves at risk, but you could be the person that saves your neighbor, saves somebody on the street, you know, we've got to start looking out for each other, okay. Um, I did say earlier, I don't really want names mentioned on here. Um, but if anybody feels they are going through th stuff, um, whether it's on here or on Facebook, please, please, please feel free to email us, um, reach out to us as an organization. Um, you know, we can hear, obviously we've always said we are here to guide, give you guidance, support and advice. You know, don't be alone. Don't, don't die in silence. And that's one thing our community is, is, is very good at. We like to die in silence. We need to start talking a lot more, okay? And we've always said, hashtag together we can. It's only when you speak to us, it's only when you tell us that we can help make an impact. And I, I'm, I, you know, I'm genuinely saying, if anybody out there that is going through anything, please, please come forward and, and you know, let us see what we can do for you, okay? Okay, Yemi, go um, over to you. Yemi? She on yeah. you? Okay. Yeah. No, I'm okay. To you. I'm not muted. Okay. okay. Um. Okay. Cool. I can. Yeah. Go on. I wasn't. I wasn't asking to speak. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we've talked a lot today about the COVID, the, the the implications. Um. As an organization, we are solution focused. Um. As a personal person, I am solution focused. So I don't like to dwell on problems. But without looking at the problem, we never arrive at the solution, you know. So, um, Lily, you've given us, you know, an amazing um, um, information about obviously where we can, you know, get the support um, if we feel that we are alone. And, you know, but there, there is something that I will say. Um, there's a lot of fear out there. There's a lot of fear out there. And people are scared. Um, so, obviously, when we are trying to when we're trying to be out there and be there for people have this in mind you know don't take offense when you meet somebody and you try to to reach out and they buff you or you know they, they rebuff they will it's not i don't think it's personal i think there's just a lot of fear and uncertainty in the world as as a as a whole you know so we've i think we've got to dig a little bit deep um and try to understand that you know, I, I might not go to my neighbor and say, do you want to have a cup of tea and get the door slammed in my face? I'm not going to take that personal because everybody's mind space is really, really, um, it's different, you know. So, yeah, when we talk about the new normal, these are some of the new normal things that we're going to have to get used to seeing, I'm afraid. Um, but, yeah, we talk about solutions and, you know, the guidelines are one, picking up the phone, you know, picking up the phone and speaking to 
to people, you know, it's check on people, people you haven't heard from for a long time. Send a WhatsApp, send a, but you know, most of us have social media, you know, let's use different channels, different outlets to reach out to people. Um, you never know whose day you will make by just a, a hello, yeah? So um, if anybody has any solutions out there, I don't know if anybody on Facebook is asking any questions. Go ahead, Lily. Yeah, I think that, um, as you said, it is the no new normal. So um, sometimes you can take the lead. If you've got a group of friends that you normally would meet up with, maybe you go to Oma White's every few months, um, there's a gang that you have, you can do a Zoom session. You know, yeah. you can gather them and say, look, let's have a party on Zoom. Everybody dress up, get your, you know, your drink, your wine or whatever, and then have a kind of Zoom session. So it's about people being creative. Um, sometimes it doesn't have to be a Zoom, a, a, a party. It could just be, okay, let's all meet up Friday night. Somebody could arrange a quiz. Um, and it just supports the, um, the social and emotional impact of COVID-19 because what you were saying is about people um, acting kind of funny when you get close to them I do feel it sometimes you feel like you're a leper yeah. when you walk around on the street people like dodge you like you've got some kind of I mean you're fine but um, we're not used to that we're not used to that at all and I do think we now have to reset ourselves and say well this is the normal especially the, the elderly the elderly will walk like three miles around you just to get to the other side and it makes it does make you feel bad makes you feel kind of conscious um but it is the new normal but i think that we have to proactively um seek to do things to maybe within your um social circle to uh, keep everybody connected sure. Like my son, he all, he's in Manchester. I've got another one, South London, and we're always on the um, doing uh, WhatsApp videos. I mean, it gets on my nerves, you know. But I have to join it. Do you understand? As soon as I see all three children on the WhatsApp, I have to join if I'm cooking or whatever because I know that they all want to see and make sure everybody's okay. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, we have them like four times a week. It's very annoying, but they feel that's the way that we can keep connected so we have to come out of ourselves and do what is not normal just to make sure and you don't know what other people are suffering yeah um emotionally so yeah thank you dear you asked about mental health and yet it was very we did touch on it but please any input you have would it would be amazing if we could hear from you because we don't know who could be listening so thank you d oh, okay all right good evening everyone I'm sorry I came in late. That's why I was asking if we talked about mental health. Um, and uh, the reason for that is that a lot of um, a lot of couples, so I'm just kind of talking about relationships. And I can I just first of all say to Mr. Mr. Alaka that I'm really sorry about your experience. And um, but also as the ladies um, have mentioned, Sometimes these situations are as a result of um, red flags that we probably don't notice or that we notice and we have somehow kind of put the back burner until it ends up manifesting itself. So I'm really sorry that you had to experience that, especially right now. Um, but I also want to say that right now with COVID, I mean, COVID is in trouble really because COVID is getting a lot of, um, COVID is taking responsibility for a lot of things in a way, but it's kind of good because things are coming out, you know, mental health, uh, those who are struggling with their mental health, it's coming out as a result of COVID. You know, no one is built or, or made, shall I say, to be on their own or by themselves. Mm -hmm. And the moment you, uh, uh, and as a result of COVID, and we find that we're spending a lot of time with just us or a very, very limited number of people, um, things start to come up, you know. So I'm just going to talk really about relationships um, and maybe how to um, stay healthy, stay strong, hopefully stay in the relationship while 
going through this uh, very difficult period. Um, and Mr. Aleka said something as well. He said that women, um, he's, he's noticing that women have become more aggressive because they're at home and they don't have patience for the children. And as he was saying that, I, I was thinking to myself, both from a, a personal and a professional um, thinking that the truth of the matter is that women with children, we go to work to get away from everybody. I mean, if you really think about it, <laughs> going to work is an outlet, you know, because we do so much, we juggle so much. So sometimes work is good to be there. And of course, there's a level of aggression. Um, and I don't mean negative aggression either. I mean, a certain of um, being, um, uh, being firm and being able to stand your ground that goes to goes with being at work. So when you're at home, you switch into that mode anyway, regardless of who is around. But one thing I wanted to say is that um, different communities, different different cultures do different things. And um, there are some cultures where the, the responsibility is joint, is shared. And personally, I think that's how it should be because if one partner is working from home and the other happens to be at home, well, that's the support needed. That's the other person's responsibility to make sure the children are maybe occupied or doing other things. And not that it's still mom that children have to go to for, for things when she's, when she's trying to do some work. Mm -hmm. So being able to create a balance, uh, a home balance with the situation, we can't go into COVID working from home and still act like we are not um, in a different uh, setting. We're in a different setting, so we have to act different. We have to behave different. We may have to adjust things just so we can accommodate. And with mental health, um, sometimes just being cooped up at home, just being not being able to talk to other people, not being able to see other people, uh, one of the first things that starts to rear his head is depression. You know, and depression can be very mild. Um, and when I say very mild, um, a level of irritability where you just don't want to talk to your husband or you're just touchy or like what Mr. Aleka said, they're a bit touchy with the children. Um, those, those little things or those so-called simple things are signs that someone just may be going through some level of depression because you're not, you're not operating within your, within your norm. So instead of us looking at it, labeling it and, and, and calling it negative things, maybe if we look more, if you're doing something that you, you, you don't normally do, if you're easily um, irritated, you're, you get angry more, you get, a, uh, you get sad more, you find yourself uh, crying for no reason, um, you find that the things that you used to give you pleasure don't give you pleasure anymore. Um, those are subtle signs that, okay, this person just may be affected by having to be in the house all the time. And what do you do? You find a solution. Walking, just walking. Right now in the United Kingdom, it's very cold, but if you can put that jacket on, wrap yourself warm and go for a walk for 30 minutes, believe me, it does your mental health a world of good. So just walk in 30 minutes, come back, you feel refreshed, you've taken in some fresh air and you're able to deal with family or whatever else they, they throw at you. Obviously we have to be very uh, careful about um, more serious symptoms of depression and, and know when to reach out. The first thing with depression is that it keeps you away from everybody. It's like that, it's like that thing that keeps you hidden away, keeps you in a dark place. So if you start to notice that you're not really feeling like talking to anybody, reaching out to anybody, that might be the time that maybe your spouse or any other support around you, if you have support around you, could help reach out. Or um, I think I heard the lady saying earlier that it, we should just, I, um, I'm sorry, guys, oh, where's that coming from? Okay, um, I heard you say earlier about reaching out, that we should call one another if you haven't heard from somebody call them, see how they're doing, send a message, um, just check on somebody. Because like I said, um, depression is one of the, um, is just about the quickest thing that creeps in and it comes in and you don't even know you're depressed. You'll call it so many other names except for depression. And that is what's going on. And the longer it stays, 
the harder it becomes to deal with. So I think I'm going to stop there. <laughs> Thank you. That's that's yeah. You you've basically put that, that that professional spin on it that we needed, you know, because you just said now um, that the, you called it mild depression, which is where you show signs of irritability, you know. Um, and some people might look at that and think that that's not. I'm not depressed. Yes, Mr. Alaka, go ahead. Yes, another thing that I want to add is that um, for to reduce depression, one thing that I also introduce is a family work within the estate. Um, from five, from six evening to seven thirty-eight, we do a work estate, and the first day, the once we come in. We take our dinner and everybody goes to bed. Yeah. And that has been a way in which uh, I would say I introduced to unify the family before the introduction of, uh, um, I'm not getting it well at home. Yeah. The children are disturbing, yeah. distractions and all that. But I think to reduce the depression, and to unify the family, the, 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 the head of the family must introduce a, a kind of a unique, if it's a game or one thing that the family that will involve all the family. That's a, so yeah. that, that's what I want to chip in about. That's a very good one. Thank you so much. Sure the, um, that's how amazing. to ease up the pressure now and how to ease up yeah. the, the work for the whole family. It will. Up. I think that's, that will help. Thank you. That's Thank absolutely. you so much. Absolutely. That's amazing. Um, Auntie Vicky, good evening. Um, it's nice to see you on board. Happy New Year. Please, would like you to lend your voice. If you could unmute yourself, please. Uh, no, it's not unmuting. Hold on. Let me. OK. okay. Hi, good evening. All right. Good evening, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. First of all, I accept Happy my apologies. Year, I was late. That's I was late okay. joining. That's oh, fine. Um, I've listened to all the contributions. I seem to latch onto Gizzi's comment that we should all reach out. I'm not um, singing any praises here, but I'm just giving an example of somebody in my community, somebody I know very well. His wife wasn't feeling well. We know sometime, you know, from time to time, she has this problem, but the lockdown has made it worse for her because she, she wasn't going out, she wasn't meeting anybody. She couldn't go to the park, but the husband has been very appreciative of people phoning in and just offering a listening ear because they're heavily involved with professionals who will help them. So I do agree with you that there is need for us to reach out if the people will allow you. And I think another thing that I seem to come across is the fact that some people will rather speak to their pastors and the pastors will take on a role. They're not trending, they're not qualified and they mess up the whole case. So how, as a group, do we think we can probably um, address this issue? They, they believe so much in the pastors that they would rather go to the pastor than seek professional advice. Okay, can okay. we go to Ahuna? Because Ahuna is actually an expert in relationship. So Ahuna, unmute and see if you can answer that for us, please. Are you able to please. unmute yourself? Thank you, Auntie Vicky. Go okay. ahead. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, communication is the key. When mm -hmm. communication, there's breaking communication in the family. When you can't talk to your husband without him insinuating um, things, you can't talk to him, you can't be yourself with him, that's when there's a gap. And when there, there's this gap, other people come in. And women or men, married people feel safe with their church leaders. 
thinking mm. that that is the only safe place to go and vent. Yes. And then, fortunately, those people take advantage of you. Mm -hmm. They take advantage of you. They 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 they, they, they brainwash you. And they cause more problems in the yep. family, That's right. more than you even got to them. Mm -hmm. So if there was communication, ab initio, in the family between husband and wife, mm -hmm. in matters you know relating to them, their kids, and all that, they won't have that gap to make them go seeking who to communicate to, who to tell, you know, such things to. And the person you're telling might not even have the experience, That's you know. It. So. I think communication is very, very key. Communication is key between husband and wife. That is when you, 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 you talk to a friend instead of talking to your husband and telling him how you really feel. That's where a man goes out to talk to somebody else and then you don't even know where the advice is coming from, whether they're coming from, you know, they really feel they want you, your marriage to work out and all that. So when there's break in communication, you allow people you know, to come into the marriage, and that's where the problem starts. Mm -hmm. It can be a pastor, to, it can be a, uh, somebody that has been, you know, not happy that it's been going well for you and your spouse, and then you bring that person in, and then he does, the person does damage in, in, the, in the relationship. So communication is very, very key. And another thing, this COVID, you know, this, the, the problem we're having with COVID is in your face. Everybody's in everybody's face. So what you do is, you find time for yourself. Like you said rightly, go for a walk alone. When uh, Mr. Yusuf Alaka was saying, they go family, you, there's a particular time, all the family. And that's maybe what we're avoiding. We don't want to, we're in the house together. We're eating together. We're watching TV together. And then we're still going for that same walk together. Maybe you want to go out on your own. And you know, when you go out, you walk around, have your me time, you know, and come back and meet the family. Nobody says we should, you know, but because of the, the COVID has made everything family, 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 family. So it's choky, kind of. And you want to go for a walk. And you know, some, some people, when you're going for a walk and uh, somebody says, look at how you're walking, you smile to that person. It is, they might even come in with quarrel. So there's so much, there's so much pr pressure. So Mr. Like, when you're saying family go together, by the time you say you want to go back, and Madame says, no, let me walk a little bit more. And there's a quarrel coming in. It feels, it feels the I agree with you, Auna. I, <laughs> I, I agree with you. So, so when you say I see that drama playing out. out. Let's all go. And there's this particular time. Maybe when maybe the woman is on the plump side that she feels, let me do 30 more minutes. And then you order everybody back home. You're probably no. <laughs> it's a problem. It's a problem. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you, Auntie Vicky. You raised a very pertinent um issue there. And I know Dee, you had something you wanted to contribute to that. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Sorry, I muted. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I was muted. No, that's okay. I saw you wanted to come in on that um, situation. Uh, okay. Yes, mm -hmm. but um, also, I, yes, what occurred to me was that this is why in churches we need um, independent counselors. I mean, they can be Christian counselors, yeah. but they need to be independent from the pastor. You can't take everything to the pastor. Number one, he's going to be burdened anyway. How much can one person take from everybody? And he's a spiritual leader. And when you have problems that are emotional and psychological, then we need to have a professional within the church who will deal with that. And yes, maybe apply some Christian principles. But churches need to understand that we are, without me going into a sermon, we are three parts. And where the church is catering to spiritual parts, we need the uh, emotional, the, the psychological part catered to. So I think that it's time we need to take counseling into church that is not done by the pastor, but someone who is a professional in that field and maybe can apply some spirituality. That's what occurred to me. 
Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Dee. And yes, that makes absolute, um, absolute sense. Taiwo has agreed with you. Thank you, Taiwo, for that. Um, yeah, you're, you're making sense. And I think, and I, I think for everybody on here, you, all of us are in, we have a church, we have a place of faith. And you can think about it with all our individual professions, every church must have a professional in the congregation. You know, so um, if you do have, please, this is, you know, we don't come on these forums just to talk, you know, go back to your places of worship and you can instigate this. You know, it is time we had, I, I want to say, re remove the burden from the pastors, because as you rightly said, Dee, they are spiritual leaders, you know, um, for you to expect a pastor to, to fix a marriage, what does he know about that? It's, it's not his realm you know, um, and he would be genuinely giving advice from his heart, you know, I don't think any pastor sets out to break up any family, to be honest, but it's the lack of professionalism, the lack of expertise that they possess, um, they will end up giving advice which would be detrimental to a situation um, unknowingly, you know, awareness, you know, people, doctors read medicine for seven years. They don't need read medicine for one year. There's a reason they do this and they become an authority in what they've read. So for a pastor to go to a theological school and then you expect him to fix your marriage in six months, it's a hard ask. And I don't think that that, that kind of pressure needs to be put on them. Yes, Lily, go ahead, unmute yourself, please. No. Oh. Um. Yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying, Giz, and what others have said about the role of pastors um, uh, giving guidance and counselling. But in all honesty, you know, that's the role that they've been doing since. And also, um, as much as they can be unqualified, and as you said, they do have the best interest at heart, when at times like this, when um, couples, especially African couples or ethnic minority couples are going through difficulties, they the first people they will call is the relatives. Yeah. To yeah. intervene. Yeah. They have no qualification whatsoever. They have nothing. Yeah. yeah? yeah. So if they're on your side, you're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully you'll get some support. But um, as much as it would be nice to have qualified um uh therapists and things like that, that's not going to happen, you know, in a month of Sundays, because people expect the pastors to be able to counsel them if they're having issues. That's the first uh, port of call. They yeah. expect them to do that. So um, if there's any other ways that uh, couples can go, any other things that they can do, apart from go to the pastors, then fine, it should be suggested. But it's an age old um, thing that's been done for years, um, you know? Yeah, I hear you, I hear you, Lily. And in, what I would say in, in response to that is that if I have, um, if I have a toothache, mm. I would not go to my mechanic, I would go to my dentist. And if my car had a problem, I wouldn't take my car to my dentist, I'll take my car to my mechanic. Reason being, my dentist knows about teeth and my mechanic knows about cars. So, so the so pastors need to be trained. Yes, the pastors are spiritually, they go to the school of theology. No, 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 Some pastors you, as well now are theology. No, some people, some people do believe that no matter what, that pastor there, he's given a listening ear. Yes, we get yeah. that. Irrespective yeah. that he might not be a professional, yeah. but if somebody has somebody who they can just at least listen to, they've yeah, unburdened yeah. that thing on their mind. Definitely. He, he Definitely. or she might not give you the, let's say, the correct Answers. or the absolute uh, solution you need, okay. but you do have a listening ear. That yeah. mechanic that you're talking about, yeah. that mechanic might not know things about your teeth, but might now tell you, I know a dentist that might help you, that might give you the best Beautiful. thing. That's the role. Signpost. That's what person, call it. That person, it might not be the person who has the label yeah. that might give you the answer. It might be somebody that knows somebody. Sure. 
And if oh. like the person who now knows that the pastor gave that person a wrong advice, I would even suggest, oh, since you know that the pastor gave that person a wrong advice, why don't you now step in and say, okay, why don't you meet this person? Since you've known that the pastor has given a wrong advice, now try and see if you can help that person and put the right the person in another direction. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you might have a label that might solve a problem. Yeah. It might be somebody who can point you to the direction of where you can get the solution. Thank you. So sorry, this is LM just batting in. No, hi this... LM, thank you. LM is my, we're colleagues from years, years. And um, LM is one of our um, national health nurses. I don't know if you guys remember last year when Justin Bieber and the NHS Lewisham choir singers, um, LM is one of the choir singers. So, and she's frontline um, in COVID. So thank you so much for coming on LM and also okay. thank you for everything you're doing. You know, we hold you in high esteem, but yeah, thanks for your take. Tywo, come in. I know you've been waiting to come in. Hey. Hi everybody. <laughs> Hi, Tywo. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Tywo. I've just been enjoying the, you know, sometimes I just got to sit in the audience now, yeah. you know, and take it all in. <laughs> but I say, let me just contribute a little sure. bit, you know. So thanks, everybody, for all your contributions so far. Excellent contributions. I've really enjoyed. I've learned. I've taken advice. Um, but before I, uh, well, okay, there were two things I was going to uh, mention. First of all, I was actually going to ask a question. Um, I went to look at the banner again, and it says uh, uh, relationships. Then it says breakdown, separation, and divorce. So my question is, are we uh, limiting the scope to couples that are, you know, because remember, there are those that are not together that may be sick. There have been a few weddings, few coming togethers, that I've seen anyway in, the, in this COVID period, you know? Um, so for those that are uh, single, we got to remember them across the age spectrum. Um, but I don't know, maybe that's intended for a different discussion because obviously with lockdown, you know, uh, everything's changed, okay? And there are a lot of people that are on their own. So that's the question on that. Um, but, um, I wanted to touch on the uh, point on the role of pastors, okay? Uh, our contributions on this particular point that was just mentioned would depend a lot on our different experiences. Um, but I think that uh, I'm qualified to speak based on a wide swathe of experiences in different churches and different countries on this, okay? Um, and I'm saying that because uh, we are here as an organization and potentially in a position to influence um, social policy on these matters. Uh, the government has at various points in time, well, churches are regulated financially through the Charities Commission, church organizations and other faith organizations are regulated okay because of what happened in this financial sphere let's bring that now into the relationship sphere into the counseling sphere there is a professional organization for counselors called the british uh, counseling association or something like that there is a so obviously there's a code of conduct there's a there are protocols in place that professional counselors abide by when offering counseling now um, some pastors may have covered elements of that in their training and be aware, in which case that is good. But I'd like to suggest that there's a high number of pastors who are people in position of influence that have not. And unfortunately, therefore, whether it's an issue of marital counseling or any other kind of counseling, um, when people come to them, um, potentially there's there is, a, 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 you know, th th there's a potential for uh, people to be taking the wrong medicine. You know, they're taking uh, Panadol for uh, something they should be taking uh, chloroquine or something, you know, you get what I, the gist there. So I would be more um, inclined, strongly, I would say even, 
to go with what Giz mentioned. I think just in the way these days, you would not dream of opening a retail store without having security uh, or a security guard at the entrance. It's part of the apparatus. I think part of the apparatus of faith-based organizations going forward is that there should be at least one officer, okay, who is qualified, who is a member of the country's uh, a, a professional association. So there is some kind of accountability for any counseling advice measures and what happens in people's lives as a result of that. I'm saying this because, I mean, over the years and over the decades, we have seen lots of messy situations because people were basically opening up to people that cared and wanted to help, but they were not equipped to help. Okay, so I'll stop there. I think, so there were two points there. I'll, I'll yield back to the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Taiwo. Thank you so much. You're always, um, you always make my brain work every time you come on and it's crazy, but thank you. It was very, <laughs> very insightful. And yeah, um, I'm happy we're on the same page, but I also want to touch on what LM said. And that is, you know, the comforts, the emotional, you know, we always do need somebody to talk to. And please, 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 if your pastor is providing that support, by all means, feel free to go seek your pastor. But when you, in doing that, you still need, you still need an expertise. We don't go to the, like I, I, the, the only analogy I will use is what I used. If my car is broken, I go to the mechanic. So, and the reason why is because I know my mechanic has studied and so he will understand what is wrong with the car and the parts. It's the same thing. You need that professional um, touch. If there is depression, as Dee said, depression comes in various forms. Your pastor may not be able to recognize the fact that depression is creeping in, okay? And would possibly not be able to signpost you properly. And it's not his fault. You cannot give what you do not have. So in no way or shape or form am I saying that your pastor is not the right place for you to go to. By all means, we need the faith. We need our faith organizations. But please, 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 especially within this COVID time, seek professional help too. That's all we're saying. Okay. Can I just say something, Giz? Yes, Adwala. I think it's very important that we come across to faith organizations, either watching the program or people in faith organizations, that that's what Saffron is here for, to yeah. help you in terms of consultancy, because I think what you guys are saying is right. I think sometimes people need to understand the parameters, their boundaries, and understand what the law says on different issues. We're just, we're talking about relationship. We also yeah. have problems when children are placed on child protection plan, and the plan says that should move out of the house, and pastor says no that should go back home because moving out of the house is going to disrupt the family. Mm -hmm. That's going against the plan of the social care. So that's actually putting every member of that family in jeopardy because then the local authority will step in. So we need the faith organization to know that Saffron is here to support you as a consultancy organization to offer you some advice on how to go about some of these day-to-day -day tasks, things that are out of your merit, you get some advice from us on it. And also to stress the fact that, you know, um, with all due respect, uh, the spiritual aspect is different from what the law says on various issues, not just to do with mental health, to do with domestic violence, to do with children in care, to do with different things. You know, often we hear of, uh, children or families being uh, chastised for different issues and different issues have been brought up and it causes family breakdown. This is what Saffron is here for. So faith organizations shouldn't think that they cannot obviously get some support from us to be able to move forward. But I do agree that there are parameters, but I also want to stress, because I have um, a friend that is a church counselor, um, works in the church as a counselor. They go through very stringent training in very established churches. 
But what we find is not all churches have that. And, and yeah. those ones, they go for proper training. They, they don't just do it off the map. They go for proper training where they're told what their boundaries are. So there are churches that have those things in place where they have marriage counselors preparing young people for, for marriage, marriage counselors dealing with marriage issues, dealing with religious relationship issues, different counselors for different issues. And those people are trained specifically to cover different areas, but then not all churches are doing that. And that's what we're here to support faith organization, Muslim organizations, whatever. That's what Safran is here for. Just wanted to stress that. Thank you, Adebola. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, as we always point out, you know, um, guidance, advice and support services. That's where we come in. So please, by all means, you know, feel free to reach out to us um, if there is that lack within your faith organization, you know, Saffron can help um, with that. But we, we don't want you to feel that we're saying you cannot um, approach your faith um, organizations in times of need. You know, we all need that support network. So be it your faith organization and Saffron, that is what we do. We link, we're, we're a bridge, you know, um, and that, that, is what, that, is our, that is our role to link you to, um, you know, various, um, places where you can get the support um, that you need. So um, thank you so much, everybody. The, through January, this topic, relationships, um, is going to continue. Um, this is going to be our January, um, our January topic. So please feel free to share. Please feel come every every Wednesday, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. UK time, we are going to be on. Um, so please, if you have anybody that has, um, I don't want you to come on here and share your personal issues, but please come on um, and talk to us. If it's something that we can help you with, we'll help you off um, of live of live recording. Yeah, just for your own, um, um, you know, self-respect really. So thank you so much to everybody that has joined in tonight. I want to thank Ahuna for your input. It's been really, really, really amazing. Um, Thanks for bringing your expertise. Mr. Yusuf Alaka, thank you so much. You know, you laid it out there. And um, like I said, we're here for you and we will be reaching out to you. And listen to what Ahuna said, go out for a walk by yourself. Leave the family at home. Yes. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. That was, a, that was a good one. <laughs> a lot has been learned. A lot has been, it has been a nice session too. It has been a nice session. <laughs> You can tell us how the walk went. <laughs> all right. All right. Thank you so thank much. You so much. Lily, thank, thank you. you. As always. Felix, thank all the way from Abuja. Me. Let me know next week how it's how it's going with the resilient families out there. Bring some case scenarios and, and teach us. It's been good. Thank you so much. Adebola, as always, thank you for your input. Yeah. Uh Taiwo, thank you, D. Yeah. Loretta, we've seen you 2021. We want you back again next week. I'd like to see you again. Thank you. Thank you so let's much. See, let's see how we can do. Yeah, we will. <laughs> we will. Marcia, thank you for popping you up again. Thank you so much, my lovely. Um, all our Facebook family and friends, thank you guys. Um, it's been amazing. We are back next week, Wednesday, the same time, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Please feel free to go to all our social media platforms. If there is anything that you need assistance with, just type it in the chat or on our pages. And one of our directors or one of our members of staff will definitely pick it up and we will be out there to help you. We are very, very, very happy to be back 2021. Very excited, guys. Oh my gosh, we've got some stuff coming. We're not going to tell you anything. We want you to be back next week and keep coming back each week. Each week we'll just be dropping, you know. I'll be dangling the carrot. So make sure you're all back every week. But no, on a serious <laughs> note, guys, please, please, please. Something is out there, you know. Let's not pretend you know, leave the theories. People are dying. Yeah. So stay safe, cover yourselves up. But as we're doing that, please also remember to reach out to your neighbor, to your family, to people in the community. You know, when you haven't heard from somebody for so long, the number of deaths I see when I open Facebook, I am tired. So let's talk. Let's, let's you know, 
hashtag together we can that's one of our mantras and we we are we are a bridge you know we 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 feel that we we know we are the bridge in the community if you need help in reaching out to people come to saffron yeah we've got enough platforms out there to help you um to to, to help you find people please don't be alone don't be an island all right have a good night everybody um it was amazing. Bye, Lily. Bye, D. Bye, Laura. Bye, everyone. Thank Say you, bye, everyone. Bye, Hannah. Oh, oh, bye. Bye. Thanks for that, Kemi. Thank you. Bye. Oh, for the Kemi, has been on. Yes, been quiet. Yes. Hope you're back next week. We yes, have to please hear. come back next week. She's from Joss. So oh, wait, wait from Joss. Oh, stay safe. Take care. Bye, Uncle Felix. It was nice having you on. Bye-bye. See you soon. <laughs>